I know a lot of you can't be in the center today, so we thought we'd actually do a video of the different exhibits that we have here in the center that show the various different building systems that we have available. Everything from sections of walls so that you don't have to rely on imagery, right down to complete buildings. We will show you the process right from design right through to manufacture and delivery and there will be talks later on on the various different building systems. So before you make up your mind, do just have a little listen to what the guys have to say. Right, the first system that we're going to look at is the various forms of timber frame. This one is a single stud lightweight timber frame. The structure of the building is still on the inner leaf where the timber is. Inside this timber is the insulation. There will be an airtight membrane as well that will get fitted in. The um, membrane follows very specific routes so that you don't get clashes with structural elements and that you maintain the um, air tightness throughout the entirety of the building. There must be no weak points. The buildings are designed and manufactured off-site according to your specification and then brought to site so the degrees of accuracy when they're putting the buildings up is very much improved rather than having guys building on a day by day by day basis. So air tightness can be proven, getting services in is easy to plan and you're not really limited by what it looks like either because on the outside of the building you could have cladding or if we have a look across here you could have any type of masonry, this one being Cotswold stone, so it's all still cavity construction. When we look on the inside now, what we'll see is that the services need to be designed into the building as well, so very often we will have membranes and we will have additional insulation and then we'll have uh, buttoning that allows for a service void and make sure that that is wide enough for all of your services that you want to put in. If you're having um, plugs that might need to have um, USBs in, make sure that the buttons are actually deep enough. It's a specification that needs to be brought about um, with your, in your planning stages. Here we have an example of a twin wall type construction. Have a look at the presentation from Frame Technologies at a, the, later today and they will be going through that in more detail. As we will see as well with this, that all of the air tightness membranes have to be detailed around every single penetration through the wall, which could be the, the um, windows and could be the doors, but also additional services that are hidden away. So here we can see up at this top level that the services that are hidden away go through open web joists or often referred to as easy joists or posi joists. They are slightly more costly than standard uh, joists or eye joists, but when getting services through, we can see that when we've got duct work, because we've got high levels of air tightness, we might need ventilation systems to be put in and drainage as well. We want to make sure that everything fits without cutting the, the joists and affecting the structural integrity of them. So planning at an early stage is absolutely crucial, but eye joists or um, posi joists at least will be able to help you get those um, products in situ. We'll now move across to have a look at one of the most traditional forms of timber frame and that is the green oak system. I'm now standing at the exhibition of the um, green oak timber frame um, construction method and this is a very natural method where the oak has not actually been fully dried out. Being natural, we can insulate it pretty much with any product that we like. And this one just shows an example of recycled newspaper that has been used as a, an insulation within the structure of the building. As we look at the frame, um, we will notice that it's designed to all be acting as one big frame and it's not completely dry and as it dries out it tightens and that and as it dries out as well it starts developing um, slight movement and also slight cracks which become a feature of the frame system. That also means though that you need to work with reputable installers so that you can design in where all your services go and make sure that the movement is absolutely accommodated within the building. This is a long lasting building system and therefore build it to last and design it to last as well. Work with guys that have worked with this system many, many, many years.
Right, another version of timber frame is SIPs or um, structural insulated panels. These are effectively two layers of OSB board or orientated strand board which is this board that we can see on the inside of this building. It's what looks a bit like Weetabix really. Two boards are glued together with insulation so there's no insulation that's just been pushed in. Inside between the two boards insulation is in there and the, the system comes as panels. So we can then use the systems because they're structural we can use the systems to make roofs, to make walls and you get a very, very good level of air tightness and insulation all in one. Design is absolutely crucial as well because when you're putting services into them, you've got to make sure you're not actually affecting the structural integrity of the building. And also make sure that when you start having things like this, rather than open web joists, here we can see an I-beam joist has been used. And it's important to know where the holes go for services because they almost need to be pre-cut. A lot of design goes into it and a lot of detailing goes into before you turn up on site. Once you get to site, of course, it's incredibly quick. You'll be airtight within two weeks. I'm now standing in the exhibit of the ICF or Insulated Concrete for Formwork Method of Construction. It's effectively polystyrene blocks that are then put up in the traditional way that the Greeks used to build where they used wooden shutter boards and um, as a formwork, hence the word form inside the insulated con uh, concrete formwork. Uh, but it's polystyrene blocks that get used as formwork. They get filled with concrete and the forms then get left behind to act as insulation. The insulation is on the outside which creates a complete thermal um, envelope for the building and you're not limited by the size and the U values. So if you wanted a much more insulated building you'd simply use a block that has a much wider insulation layer so that at that point you are then getting down to very very close to passive type uh, insulation levels. The, it's not actually building out of polystyrene, you're building out of concrete and the polystyrene is simply the former and the insulation. You should not be limited either by what it looks like on the outside because you can have stone slips or brick slips that are put on the outside and they're glued on um, or you can have a render system as well or timber cladding if you, if you like. Um, with this, because it's so strong, you could also have concrete intermediate floors to create wide open spaces downstairs and then your stud work or walls upstairs can simply be built onto that load bearing platform. Um, these things also can be used subterranean, so if you're building basements then certain insulated concrete formwork products can also be used in that. And here we have another form of insulated concrete formwork, which is a timber that has been made into blocks. So you've got wood chips made into blocks and then insulation is put into the layer of the outer layer of the block and the concrete can still be poured in. So this timber then becomes the basis and replaces the polystyrene that you saw on the previous method. Now the cladding on the outside can still be um, a render or it can be any type of system that you really want. And when we see the detail on this, we can notice that the insulation uh, layer then has a base coat put onto it that then has a fiber or um, nylon type netting that goes into it. It's not a metal netting so that you don't get any condensation on it. Um, another base coat goes on and then a render coat would go on the outside or you can put stonework onto it or brick slips or any type of finish that you want. And if we have a look over here we can actually see certain of the brick slips that have been put on, different coin working on the side and we can also see certain of the lintel work around the doors as, uh, and fenestration as well. We also note that on certain of the systems we can actually use curves if we want to as well. So we're not limited in design with these types of systems because the concrete will get poured in afterwards. So if you're looking for a modern method of construction and you're still kind of in the masonry arena, then perhaps insulated concrete formwork is something that you need to have a deeper look at as well. Now we're standing in front of the exhibit of traditional brick and block, which is probably the most common building system known to us at the moment. Things have moved along a little bit, but 
essentially you've still got an outer leaf of uh, decorative finish which is going to be your brickwork a course of brickwork it could also be um, stonework um, and then you will have a cavity the cavities have changed a little bit over time, whereas the cavity used to be about 40 or 50 mil. Now this one is approximately 150 mil. So depending on the size of the cavity that is designed in, your footings obviously have to be designed in accordance with the, the thickness of the wall. You then have to start looking at different uh, wall ties that go in. This particular wall tie needs to be um, inserted in such a way that water will drop, drip off and go down the, the cavity or be driven back to the front wall to go out and then disappear out of weep holes at the bottom. Now this cavity will be filled with um, insulation. Sometimes it'll be a partial fill if it's a solid type um, insulation board or it might be a full fill of mineral wool. And because you've got such a big cavity it's quite important to make sure that when you add apertures that you use a cavity closer. We can see at the top we've got a metal uh, catnic type lintel that goes across where potentially a door would go and then we have a cavity closer which is a a product that simply fits into the cavity and has insulation on it and that then gets nailed down um, to actually hold it in place and then when your your fenestration and your or your doors get fitted as we can see here they don't cover the cavity um, but the cavity closer now stops air movement and um, thermal bridging um, to the outside of, the, of that system. Now you can get a good air tightness from um, brick and block construction, it just needs to be detailed. So don't think, oh that's an old system, we don't need to have it because we've worked on, on uh, properties that have got air tightness of just about one and there's also passive houses that have been built using these, this building system. Now it's something slightly more modern in the same vein as brick and block is what's known as thin joint. We've still got the outer skin which can be anything, this time it's uh, flint blocks. We've got insulation in the cavity but we've got block work now that actually has a, instead of a mortar bed, it's got a cementitious glue just holding the blocks together and then there'll be a, a wire type of brick force which is a reinforcement in between the blocks just to stop any cracking. Um, which is what the mortar bed is usually for. So this isn't a complete system, so you do need to make sure that the guys that put it in aren't just traditional guys, because very often these blocks as well, because they're lightweight, they can be cut on site, to make the, uh, but they need to be cut very, very accurate. Otherwise, if you start off with the first layer being a little bit skew, you haven't got any movement within that mortar bed to be able to correct it as you go up the layers. Albeit that it can be quicker, because you haven't got the compression you'll be able to get more layers of construction in a day because of the weight of the blocks. Another masonry system also using the thin uh, bed of mortar uh, or cementitious glue. This system is using aerated clay blocks that act as insulation. They can be used without extra insulation or you can also put external wall insulation on. This system is slightly different from the previous thin joint system in that it's a monolithic system, meaning that there's no cavity on it. So simply the blocks are built in such a way that you can then make them completely watertight and you do not then need to have a cavity on them at all. Um, if you do need extra insulation, it simply gets glued onto the outside. And here I'm standing in front of a straw bale construction uh, method. Um, not just for the realms of stories like the three little pigs, it's actually a product that has moved on with the times and you can build to improved efficiency levels and as well as building completely natural buildings. If you're going to be using straw bale it is truly sustainable because it's actually a byproduct of another industry and you also then would be using natural plasters like clay and lime. Um, if you want to know more about this and thought actually I didn't realize that people were still doing that then please do listen to the talk a little bit later on because that will give you a lot more information as well. Right, thank you for watching today. Um, as we've shown you some of the exhibits that we have here at the National Self Build and Renovation Center. Uh, we don't only have the stands that we were looking at. As you can see we have some real houses in here as well. So do come on down. We are open and if you haven't been here before,
plan your visit, do book, come on down, have a little look at these and sometimes you'll be able to see things then that don't require as much imagery. Please do enjoy the rest of the day and thank you for watching.